always a reminder for myself and abdukul aji so da'if o miskeen o zalim o jahal but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. Alhamdulillah the last 10 days of Ramadan at kumina na to be free from the fire. The first 10 days was to enter into the mercy of Allah which alhamdulillah for awliyaullah they give us the deep reality of entering the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that by the virtue of that light of Prophet the rahmah that dresses the servant that allows them to enter into the gates of mercy and fasting so that they can receive the blessings of Allah The immense reality of how we're in need, Allah makes His nation to be in need of His presence that they need to be in the presence of His reality and as a result of that rahmah and mercy Allah showers them and blesses them with immensely more rahmah and mercy by granting them the ability to fast. And then Allah while in the presence of Prophet describes, how can I punish them when they're in your presence and asking istighfar. Means Ayatul Kareem Qur'an becomes alive and is, is living as an everyday event for the servant in which Allah reminds that, how can I punish this nation when they're amongst the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad because of the mercy and the rahmah and that they're asking for forgiveness. And the second 10 days of Ramadan becomes forgiveness and maghfirah. Asking Allah for all the wrongs that we've done, we're doing and we will be doing a wrong that Allah dress us and bless us and wash us and forgive us. And the last 10 days is a freedom from hellfire and these are the days of ithika for those whom wish to seclude themselves and isolate themselves and those whom wish to understand the greater depth of, of seclusion in which they see themselves in their grave. Once they isolate the reality of the grave begins to open for the servant. That in my grave… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. who will reach to me. We take with us in the grave the knowledge that we brought. There's no more teaching at that time. You are what you have brought into this abode. And that's why Prophet encouraged to his nation, seek knowledge. That the knowledge is a power and when people don't understand the power, one of the understandings of its power is that you take into the grave the knowledge you have. It's not that you'll go there and you'll be inspired now, oh say this so that you'll be avoiding a punishment. There's no more teaching in there, there's not an angel that comes with you to teach you. It means that what we brought of our knowledge and our deeds, those are the companions that we come into the grave with, all the du'as, all the salawats, all the reading of Qur'an, all the extraordinary prayers. All of these companions of light come with us, say, I'm the du'as that you recited and now this is what I inspire within your heart, begin to recite this du'a. I'm the amal and the actions that you were doing 
And these are now the actions inspire within you to activate those that you brought with you of knowledges. So means this is a time of, of itikaf and khalwa in which the, the servant is meditating, contemplating with the knowledges that they have gained to date then how to activate those realities. And what they understood from these seclusions is that the immense need for the mercy of Allah that everyone has no matter how good they think they are and they shouldn't think that they're extremely good. This way of humility is to think, ah oh, I have many things Allah is going to be upset with. And the seclusion is a time in which to become acquainted with that reality in which Allah gives to them that this is going to be your abode, this is the difficulty of your grave and this is the punishment of your grave. And they try with their zikr, with every action to lessen that burden and the only action that saves them from the intensity of, of bad character that we bring with us and that we attract it through our bad actions is the presence of Prophet And that's when the reality of Ayatul Kareem that, I can't, I can't punish you while he's in your presence means that when the servant is training in seclusion and understands that, that these practices won't stop the difficulties that are coming and they can go to the Muhammadan Way website and, and Google khalwa and two or three different sobats on the khalwa and the importance of that because the shaykhs actually have been to khalwa. So it's not a philosophy, we're not reading somebody else's book, they teach you first hand from their seclusions the events that happen and the first 40 days of seclusion is the freedom from your grave punishment. It's not the visions of, of heavens and it's the visions of hell and the levels of punishment that you would have reached and how to pull yourself by your knowledges, reality, the madad of your shaykhs from pulling yourself out of that situation. So for tonight the understanding of Inkum min nar is that the presence of Prophet extinguishes fire. And that uh, when difficulty was coming and nothing else was resolving that difficulty that they understood and Allah granted them to see that when they called upon the presence of Prophet that the light and the, the shining presence and the beatific reality of Rasul Kareem is as soon as he begins to enter into that abode all punishment stops of fires and difficulties stop and Allah wants the servant to know that. That if it's not for the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad I would have punished you. That there is nobody whose deeds they are pleasing to Allah enough that they would have escaped the punishment of Allah and that's why the du'as of the Sultanul Awliyas who their lives are un- immaculate, they're un- unimaginable and all their du'as are about approaching through humility. Not that they got it, they're secured for it, they, they, they think they're going to paradise but always in an in a immense sadness that if you're going to punish me and if, if anything I'm coming through disbelief, I'm coming through no actions, I have nothing because they understood that this path of humility was to negate oneself and what they could rely on is the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad So that Allah wants the best of manners that you are in need of your Rasul, you are in need of your Imam. And that you have to know that with all your entire being to safeguard even your own soul you have to know that. And that's, that's the bond that the believer will have with the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And that's why then the shaykhs come out of these events, you know coming out of trying to be free from hell and be reintroduced to humanity to tell people, good God don't think anything gonna save you. 
you're not going to impress Allah with your salah, with your zakah, with your hajj, with anything you do, nothing going to impress Allah because we don't know that in every breath what we're doing wrong. And Prophet was, was conveying to Sayyidatina Isha that don't don't ask to be judged by Allah mean avoid that circumstance. We're a nation that we approach through humility, not that we think we have something that Allah will be impressed and that Allah judge me. It's, no, we don't want anything from judgment. We're coming only through the door of humility and ishq and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad When they understood that then their life was to come out and propagate that reality. That save your souls, SOS, save all souls. And the saving of our souls is attach your one and touch your being to the most beloved of creation, to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad with good deeds and actions. That's why faith in action. So, mashaAllah, I saw other companies now are using that expression to put out a red van to go out and feed people. So good deeds inspire other people to do similar and that's when you know it's something good is when other people are now being inspired, oh well let's go get a van and feed people, give back to people. Great, that's what this society needs. Allah sent us into these lands not to curse them but to save them. That when they begin to burn themselves by their actions. When they begin to orient themselves towards Jahannam instead of paradise, Islam is a shining star. Islam doesn't hide, it's the darkness that comes that the stars will shine even brighter. Because Prophet described, my companions are like stars. What do, you be, what do you think if the companions are stars, on the last days these ashaqeen they're being dressed by the holy companions. So that you do your practices, you keep your love, you, you understand who the star maker is by keeping your presence with the love of Allah and the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad then Islam becomes the shining star of zulumat. Oppression comes and then tell people, come back and reorient yourself. You are a man and you are a woman and orient yourself towards the heavens and stop playing with these devils. Islam comes to perfect their entire system from their finance, from their life, from their belief, from everything. Now everyone's starting to quote Islam. People who were fighting against it were saying, these are the only people that have this real religion. While everybody else is doing every corrupt thing, these people are praying and fasting for 30 days. And that's why when the oppression becomes so dark the stars will shine so much brighter because when everything is daylight you really can't see the stars. It's only in the night that you can see the star. Means when the zulamat and zulam comes so strong upon the earth and mankind they want salvation and they want the truth is that, Ja Nasrullahi wal fat. That when Allah's opening comes and you see mankind come in droves. It's going to be something astonishing because they'll see that these are, these are lights from the heavens. These are people whom they don't compromise their belief, they don't mix with these garbage understandings. And all the garbage understanding that was trying to hide itself as grey will clearly become white and black. Evil will show itself as evil and uh, the disguise of fooling people will fall from its grace and fall from its ability to hide. So now we're even seeing that, we left off on that last week that this saffron colour and this character of these people is, is, is disgusting reality and everyone should understand that when you don't have Allah in your heart there is no other. So it's clear, so a lot of philosophy people or people who want to be soft and general, gentle, they say, well they're kind, it doesn't matter. We understand if Allah is not present, shaitan is then there. So the kindness that you're talking about is shaitan. 
because he's deceitful. So when someone is devoid of Allah, is they don't believe in oneness and we know the people of the book if they believe in oneness means all the creation that believes in God, believes in a higher power, believes in, in the realities of Allah that there is a oneness, there is a power then they have a light within their heart. When someone is devoid of that and thinks that there are statues and idols and they, they go to something completely devoid of Allah because as soon as they begin to say statues and incorrect worshipness Allah's light leaves their being, they become devoid of light. Anything devoid of Allah's presence it doesn't stay empty, it means whose presence is there? Shaitan. Mashaykh the they're, they're nice, they're like this, it doesn't matter what that is, forget that the person's nice, shaitan is there and his job is not to show horns, not now, his job is to be deceitful. So he talks with the sheep's mouth but he's a, a wolf in disguise, he talks with a softness and kindness because every child growing up saw these cartoons. Every time the coyote wanted to get that bird he talked very nice because this is the symbol of shaitan that he, he talks with a, a forked tongue and that becomes the understanding of last days that if the heart is devoid of Allah we must know shaitan is very strong in that person and it's a matter of time that they will show themselves, the shaitan will show itself. And the danger of what that shaitan represents in life and death and the hereafter and that becomes clear. The last days this game becomes slowly diminishing, either they have the light and they go towards the light or if they're devoid of light the shaitan inside them will begin to appear stronger and stronger in which the grey vanishes and the light and the darkness become very clear. We pray that in the Aitqum min an nar that Allah open for us the immense love for Sayyidina Muhammad And by that love of Prophet Allah deposits a light that Nur Muhammadi enters into the heart of the believer and begins to fight within their heart to establish the flag of Allah La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah if Prophet establishes that flag within the heart of the servant that becomes the light of guidance, the light of blessings, the light of every Divine grace. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us and grant us these lights and this love and this ish for all of eternity and what Allah grants for us to never take away whatever Allah gave us of lights not to diminish those lights but to increase those lights. Anyone who wants to read from these du'as and the Grand Shaykh du'as, even du'a command from Imam Ali Salam, the immensity of that, what you gave me of light, what you gave me of belief, don't let me enter into punishment nor would you punish one whom came into your oneness and called out for your najat and your safety. The beatific way in which they pray to Allah and beg Allah for forgiveness and that, Ya Rabbi what you granted us of this light and this love, don't let us to enter into difficulty to fire into the abode of, of evilness. Don't count us amongst the evil ones but amongst the good ones, the lovers of the reality of your Divine the Presence and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad his holy companions in Ahlul Bayt. All awliyaullah fi samai wa fi ard bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. And at the end of last night we talked about that people who want to struggle, men and women, the most noble intention is not of fear. Don't, don't make the intention, Allah will punish me, I'm going to have to wear my hat, Allah will punish me, I'm going to have my beard, Allah will punish me, I have to have hijab. That we do what we do out of love and ishq that make every act of worshipness based on your love. Love for the companions, love for the, the women of the household, love for the example that they set 
that they were dying to uphold the religion and Allah made it something that we can pick and choose. And shame on us for not choosing the more difficult path. So when we choose it, we choose it out of love for them that, Ya Rabbi for the sake of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad grant me to carry the holy sunnah, to be a recipient of the sunnah, the hat, the beard, the rings and for the ladies to cover themselves and to carry the Islamic banners and flags for the sake of the Ahlul Bayt and how much they suffered and how much they were humiliated for the sake of, of their belief and the sake of what they were carrying of Islam and how people were trying to destroy that and take that away from them. So we can do so much based on love and that love to be rewarded by ishq and by immense, immense love from Divinely Presence and the presence of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.